ECMO is becoming a fascinating new addition to medicine and saving some pretty sick patients. And we in EMS can have a really big role in this if we start pushing forward. Let's check out this GEMS article here and talk about ECMO and how it can benefit our patients and really directly involve EMS. becoming a very fascinating thing and something that's actually really improving survival rates of some of our sickest patients. In fact, some COVID patients, the last ditch effort that we're doing is actually using ECMO in order to you know, facilitate that treatment and hopefully oxygenate the body again. So it's a very interesting thing that we're doing here during COVID as well. I'm going to show you how that all works right now. So let's get into this article from the GEMS magazine. If you want to check out the actual article and the cases, hit the link in this video and you can check that out right now. So what is ECMO exactly? Because this is something that's new to medicine, definitely going to be new to EMS and using criteria in order to transport the patients or to hospitals, much like we do with strokes, we'd be transporting to an ECMO team based on certain criteria. And we're going to talk about that shortly. But what is ECMO? ECMO is simply a pump and rewarmer and a system that we allow for to bypass the heart and the lungs. So by that I mean is that what we have is we actually take a, uh, we hook up this machine to a, a large vein, particularly the femoral vein, those types of areas. What we're going to do is we're actually going to take that, though, that blood that's on its way back to the heart and we're actually going to bypass it and we're going to put it into this ECMO machine. This ECMO machine is going to act as a pump and it's going to act as a warmer and it's going to actually allow us to uh, remove carbon dioxide from the blood and infuse oxygen into the blood itself. And so after it does that and it actually oxygenates that blood, then we're going to bring it back and we're actually going to bring it back into an artery so that way we can actually basically place it into the body completely oxygenated already. And so depending on the certain locations and depending on the, the physiology of it, it'll depend on where the locations are going to connect. But the whole idea is that we would take it from a deoxygenated side, a large vein, we would pump it through the machine, we would uh, get it oxygenated, rewarm it, and we would bring it back into an artery in order to be pumped through the body and again effectively bypassing the heart and the lungs so that way essentially it gives the heart and the lungs a chance to uh, correct or rest for that matter and it essentially buys us time and that's kind of the idea of this ECMO machine it certainly buys us time so that way we can correct the pathophysiology so for example in these COVID patients what we're doing is we're actually going to bypass the heart and the lungs so that way we can give the lungs a chance to heal the patient's lungs to heal and that and basically create an environment so that way the lungs can start oxygenating the body itself and so that's why we use ECMO in those patients and we also use it in patients that have ventricular fibrillation for a lot of different reasons that patients can go into ventricular fibrillation but we do know is that these patients actually have a a difficult time pumping blood around the body. We know that these patients are going hypoperfuse and they're ultimately going to cardiac arrest and dying. And the ECMO machine may give them a good chance. And there's actually a study out recently in 2020 that is showing that there's actually a fantastic chance in a large, in a portion of patients uh, that actually have given them a better chance between ACLS algorithms that we typically use and rapid transport to ECMO. So let's talk about that. So when is it most effective? Well, you heard me say it, when we're in ventricular fibrillation, which is this rhythm right here, uh, when we are recognizing patients that are in ventricular fibrillation and meet the criteria, which we're gonna show you in a second here, then we're going to actually find a pretty impressive increase in survival rates. With rapid transport with ECMO or to ECMO, these patients, if they meet their criteria, have a 43% survival rate. If we are just using standard ACLS approach, we have a 7% survival rate in a patient that has a prolonged ventricular fibrillation. That's a massive difference 
in these, okay, between 43% and 7% survival, just simply rapid transport to ECMO with good CPR, good ventilation, um, you may be even using a mechanical CPR device to keep that going. Those are all things that are going to lead to this high of a successful uh, rap or when successful survival rate when we're rapid transporting to ECMO. So pretty impressive. So like I said, when is it most effective? Well, when it comes to EMS and when we're going to use it the most or at least um, transport it to the most is when patients are in ventricular fibrillation. And that's what the Pittsburgh EMS is doing right now. So how can EMS get involved? Well, we've already talked about how they can get involved and is that we need to recognize the desire or the need for ECMO. And so for example, if you're in your ambulance, you have a patient that has gone into a witness cardiac arrest. Basically the idea is very similar to what we would do with stroke bypasses. If we recognize this cardiac arrest that is a candidate for ECMO, then what we would do is instead of coming to our smaller hospital, we would bypass and go to a tertiary center that has ECMO capabilities and activate the ECMO Team, much like we would activate a stroke team. That's pretty much what we're going to do. So the key pieces is to recognize if your patient is a candidate for ECMO. And the big things that we're looking, now there's lots of different criteria that are out there right now, but the big things that we're looking for, the patients that are going to benefit from ECMO the most, are patients that we have an experienced witness cardiac arrest, are provided with bystander CPR prior to arrival of EMS, Patients that present with two EMS with an initial shockable rhythm or PEA with an organized complex appearing at a rate of greater than 20 per minute and appear who appear to have had good neurological cognitive function as prior to arrest event. So those are the big things that we're going to look for. Basically, we're looking for patients that have viability and these types of things are showing some sort of viability and improving the chances that they will benefit from ECMO. So that is how EMS is going to get involved. And this, this is the patient kind of criteria that we're using. And we have a patient that has the highest benefits of getting ECMO. Then that gives you a good indicator that we should bypass small hospitals that don't have the capabilities of doing ECMO and going to tertiary centers that do. Now, it is very expensive. It is um, and it has a highly trained team that actually is going to use ECMO, which is why there's such a long criteria or a high viability criteria for these patients because we only have a select number of team members that can do it. We only have a select member of, of machines that can do it, so of ECMO that can do it. It's expensive and it's bulky. It's quite large. And so we're transporting the patients that are going to benefit the most from it. And that's why we have this really extensive criteria in order to do that. So that's how EMS can get involved and that's how you can recognize which patients are going to benefit the most from ECMO uh, by using this criteria to determine that. Thank you so much for checking out this GEMS video. This is all based on a GEMS article that was written uh, by Simon Taxel here. And so if you're interested in reading the case study and the information about ECMO so you can learn about more in a red form, you can check out the GEMS article that is available to you right now. All you have to do is click the link in this video and it'll take you right there. We'll see you next time.